Oh god, thank god it's story only. <laughs> I get to read. I get to take a break from the stress. Good, good, you nicked my sunglasses. Too bad you'll have to try again. Damn it. I didn't face all those waves just to... As long as I can keep trying, I can. The mist thickens. It expands, devouring everything, our futures, our hopes, and any slim chance of victory we had. And so does the fog of my sight, of my mind. Will this continue until either Ishmael gives up, or until he gets tired of this little game? Until he simply walks over and crushes my clock? Could Virgilus piece my shattered clock back? Is that even possible? If... I did as Faust told me to, and blew up my head, not even a shred of me would be... Your repertoire is starting to get old. How about we just zoom right past that and to the main event? I call this clock bashing. No, Dante. Run, get out of here. That clock fellow's got to be someone so very precious to you, hmm? Just look at her hanging onto my leg after all that beating. Not the manager. Dante. No, not Dante. Not Dante. Dante. Should I press the button? Is that really going to be my last ever thought? There was a distant sound like an answer to my question. That solemn sound told clearly through the blinding fog. Oh. It was a skiff, one much smaller. Much more modest than ours. From beyond the misty veil, the skiff slowly glided across the water in our direction. On it was a solitary figure holding an oar. A giant harpoon was attached to the bow of the ship. But why? The big brother of the middle, who could probably break that puny skiff in half with his bare hands, stares at it in a stunned silence. It became clear that the skiff didn't float here by accident. When the figure on the boat began gently rowing in our direction. Through the mist, we saw something flash atop the skiff. The figure hurled something in our direction. It flew so fast that no human eye could catch it. I didn't even have the time to register that something was thrown for noticing that something was piercing the big brother's left shoulder. There was a powerful shockwave, far mightier than anything that the pirates had fired earlier, struck us. The air itself quaked. It was not a distance that most people would even think about jumping across, but... A figure leaped from the skiff to the lobotomy corp branch gracefully and with agility. The man from the middle, who so far had appeared Unassailable, stumbled and fell to his knees. His shoulder was skewered. Oh. <sighs> you? That was when I finally noticed what the figure had thrown. It was a harpoon. A harpoon too immense to be thrown by a mere person, let alone when at such blinding speed. The hooded figure's arm was wreathed in a familiar light. You old geezer. <laughs> So you were out there fishing. What do you think? Ink you're some hot shit now? That they made you a color? Just because you hunted the marlin whale? Are you challenging the middle to hunt... Hunt like we're some whale, that it? Just because you hunted the marlin whale. Are we meeting Ahab? You are not the kind of idiot that would attack me without knowing the consequences. No, because this is... Okay, this is a male voice. This is not... Ahab, and I don't even think it could be Queequeg, because those were both attributed to be female. The middle is no different from a whale, hmm? But that's not why I'm here. I'm just after a fish that got away. 
course you are. I'm sure there's no need for me to remind you that the middle never forgets. Feel free to write me down in that remaining margins of that nasty little book if you wish. The old man tugs a harpoon lodged in the big brother's shoulder. The big brother tried to hold, hold his ground against the harpoon's pull, but there was a crunch. Those that do not bend, break. The harpoon tore off his entire shoulder with it. It was a force that would have turned most people into tattered meat. Not bad. Would you like to give it another try? Fine, fine. I'll leave for now. But don't you forget. The middle remembers. It doesn't matter what I did here, the middle will remember everyone and everything that dare to turn their backs on it. Middle will... Doesn't matter what I did here. And the middle always pays its debts in whichever form. Ishmael and I had no choice but to watch in silent awe as the old man approached us. The harpoon was still in his hand, and if he wished to strike us with it, we could never hope to get out of its way. I'm looking for the fish that consumed the structure. Are you two alone here to fish? Is it Ahab? I could have sworn they said she, though. Okay. Ooh. Indigo Elder. That was an unexpected of you, Faust. For you of all sinners to be the one to bring aboard or a big shot to our humble abode. Do you have any idea how many times that prick killed us? The least you could do is... Yes, that reminds me. I'll have to reopen my personal consultation hours for a certain or an kleptomaniac among us. Thank you, Virgil. Cause he deserves it. You steal shit and got us in trouble. It's bad almost as bad as Dawn throwing the freaking spear through the glass. But at least I had a sense of justice. You fucking just why for a hair salon coupon. Oh, Virgil's obvious discontent at the involvement of an outsider didn't seem to bother Faust. I considered him indispensable to the completion of this mission. And why is that? Because I am the only one who can hunt that pallid whale. Of course you are. The indigo elder. Indigo? He is a color? That means to say that I am the very moment I mean, am sharing a space with not one but two color fixers? I heard that you were wandering the Great Lake to hunt its whales. And last I heard, you hunted one, one of the five calamities. The all-impaling marlin whale. Oh, so that's why Virgilus said there were four, there were five, now there's four. The old man grunted. It was neither a confirmation nor denial, but that was the way the old man was. Everyone understood that. All circumstantial evidence suggests that the golden ball was devoured by the whale well, stranded at the Great Lake. Yes, that very same pallid whale of the five calamities normally observed in the outskirts. Hmm, of course, that's how things always tend to go. We've wasted much time. So I'll be blunt. I wish to hunt the pallid whale. Yes, and time's all we have. Moreover, we know where the whale is headed, and I am certain that you have spent a significant amount of time observing and learning that the whale, learning that whale to hunt it. 
I've got a plan. And I'll do anything to make it work, even if you want me there only as bait. And this is how we'll do it. The crowd fell silent when Ishmael finished explaining her plan. You're mad. All that thrashing's finally sent you off the deep end. I'm just going there for my mission, and the golden ball just happens to be in the same direction. I'll leave it up to you. Well, the man to the manager, since their decision matters the most. This company, me, we're both just us trying to find, find a way to reach our goals. That's all this is. Besides, does anyone have any better idea? No, can't agree to that. We're making a mistake by even entertaining that blar farmy idea. I must ask you one thing, one last thing. Will you join us to fish, Red? You knew Elder suddenly broke his silence with a question. I'm not experienced or particularly skilled at hunting marine life, but I have other more important concerns that prevent me from joining. So no, unless the worst comes to pass, I will not take part. The old man rose from his seat and walked off as though he was about to leave. Wait, wait a moment. We don't need the guide. But with, with a proper plan, we are more than capable of completing this mission. To give up so quickly is... I never said I am. This loud screaming ship won't do in our hunt for the pallid whale. Screaming? I don't think Mephi was that loud. The hunted, the boats must remain near and covert. A narrow, sturdy boat is what we need. Huh? So all you need to hear was that Virgilus wasn't going to be going to help out? Why? Right. This could go much smoother if Virgil was, was with us. We can prepare a boat that fits your specifications, should you request it. That's alright. I'll sail on my own skiff. That old dinghy. That whale could split it in two with a little light wag of its tail. No. That skiff may not look like much, but it's extremely durable. I see that X Corp's allies have been used in its construction. That could not have been an easy ingredient to come by. Oh, another benefit of having a color bestow upon thee, then. I have heard tale of. Hmm? Instead of entertaining that bombardment of questions, he approached me. I noticed it in the earlier scuffle. That clock seems to have been you and your crew's lifeline. I know not how it works, but I presume it is a singularity of sorts. It will not work against the whale. So start now. Get used to the idea that not everything can be brought back. Why? Why did you accept even after Virgilus opted out? It was a question I've been unable to let go. Dante asked why you accepted our request, even after Virgil has opted out of it. You asked me the wrong question. I would have denied your request had Red agreed to take part. Let's say that Red joined us. We would together battle the whale in a long, arduous struggle. In the end, the whale would surely go down taking one of us with it. That is why I would have opted out if Red chose to join us. Because the hunt would no longer be mine. Whatever doth mean, thy intentions elude me. I mean that I would not be able to test the limits. The limits? What are you even talking about? Look, to hunt that whale we have to repair with everything we have and out of fear humans drew borders even to the outskirts that lie beyond the city limits beyond it are stars that lie beyond the edge of understanding beyond even the concept of fear itself i am but a fisherman seeking to cross the borders and challenge that very understanding 
Are you talking about what lies beyond the outskirts? It's outreaches? That whale devours everything. It brings nothing but calamity. How could you... Ah, so you have been a prey once, sailor. Countless lakes here also devour, summon calamities. If you find yourself at a crossroads, if you find yourself and your life is worth nothing in the face of what lies before you, recall this conversation. I am no good with advice, never was. Still, I thought I'd part a few words. As a fellow seafarer, suppose I feel a bit of a kinship. As per the old man's directions, we rode on the skiff, prepared on, on Mephi. I saw Ishmael moments before boarding the skiff of Mephi. This was Ishmael's plan, but I had no way of knowing what she was really thinking. I had an inkling, yes, and so far, I've been going along with these vague guesses. Vague guesses that led to disasters. So I had to ask her myself. Ishmael, what do you really want? What I really want? I see another vision of Ishmael. She was hiding it well from the other sinners and Virgilis, but I could clearly see what she really wanted. Her true desire. Ishmael, you... She was lifting a body from the waters. A body that was torn asunder, shattered bones, strips of muscle well, tissue, flesh. Ishmael trembled with elation before what looked like the captain's mutilated corpse. What? Come on, let's get going. She doesn't know that it, Dante saw that. That oh, oh no. Well, brothers dealt with. Going back to moral motor. Uh, moral but. Let's get Spice Bush back in here. Ryoshi. Bring it out again. Uh, let's put you on back burner because I do want you to get some levels. Let's bring you out to... Actually, nope. Dismiss you. And... Support. As we discussed earlier, we took, took a different route from the Indigo Elder. We were to first arrive at a separate destination for our plan. Something's floating over there. Not long after we crossed the line where the lake tur ink water turned dark gray, we noticed something pale peeking out from the lake. Are those islands? There are a lot of them. They may be reefs. Perhaps a, this is... Perhaps that is this lake's challenge, to navigate it while avoiding them and, and the best of our ability. Well, they surely do look rocky, but they're too big to be called reefs. Do you see aught, Dante? We may attempt to discover a path that does not lead to an area cluttered with such obstacles. Yet that we are required or does to haphazard a path unknown. It may lead to this plan's ruin. Hmm. If you can sense even the most general direction of the golden ball, please relay it to me. I can use it to approximate its location. I can assure you to a degree of accuracy now that we ha have with us additional data provided I did by the Indigo Elder. Hmm. Why couldn't you have just been our magic compass to begin with, Glockhead? They are able to do this only under the peculiar conditions of the Great Lake. 
which has very few new in a way of obstacles. The urban areas of the city are dense with structures, both high and low, and into the underground. The higher population density also complicates matters. Consider that Dante can detect the golden ball only in the close proximities. Considering there may be insurmountable obstacles in our way, their sense will not be much help there. So, they're back to being just your usual clockhead anywhere else. Uh, so that's why. That's why I could feel the golden ball here, even when it was so far away. I raise my finger and point it toward the general direction of this vague feeling. Confirmed. We will turn the ship around in that direction. Ishmael wordlessly steered the ship according to Faust's words. We grew ever nearer to the island, or a reef. A heavy silence descended upon the sinners. Oh. Until Ishmael gasped with a sudden realization. It's this lake. There was an incomprehensible look on Ishmael's face. Maybe I saw unrestrained joy. The joy of finding something she's been searching for for so long. Such an overwhelming, all-consuming happiness that her face muscles began to twitch on their own. Maybe I saw extreme fear. Fear in the face of destined, unavoidable horror. The lake's splashing waves hit her trembling face and rolled down her cheeks, or maybe she was sweating from dread. Ishmael, do you have any new information to share with us? Yeah, here. I know what to do from here. I know exactly what to do. Otis? I can't clearly see what's in front of us from back there. Tell me precisely what you see. Their numbers, their sizes, all of it. Trying to avoid the wild current and a safe path around these rocks, understood. Otis nodded empathetically before Rin's Rising from her seat to gaze is at the path ahead, she balanced herself at the ship as the ship rocked. Yeah. Okay. About 350 meters ahead, minuscule, plain patterned, glistened rocks. About 500 meters ahead of that is a medium sized rock. It has a bump on top of it that stands out. Continue. Not so far ahead from there is a large island with a rough, porous surface. Oh, upon closer inspection, it is an archipelago of three, four similar islands. Good. Ishmael began fiddling with the steering gear and the engine's output levers as if something had clicked in her mind. Good. We made it past the first rock. Its texture was a bit different from that of normal rock, wasn't it? G.E. That's not the texture of a rock, or even soil. We just passed the second one. Wait, what's so weird about the texture? I can't see over the big boy in the long one. That there is a living, breathing thing. What? Wait, Swabby. Watch where you're steering the ship. We're going to crash into that third rock at this rate. And that's what I'm going to do, Otis. That's where we get off. That rock, that creepy porous rock over there? Boy, feel free to crash into that rock on your own free time. But don't take all of us with you. That's not even a single tree up there. Let alone a person. What the bloody hell are you anchoring there for? You gotta screw your head on in a different direction in the Great Lake, Cliff. What are you talking about? A loud shock and ear splitting sound out of the skiff scratching and sliding against something cut he slip off. Do you even know where you're going, woman? Oh yeah, she knows. Wait. That white color, Ishmael. Yeah, those aren't islands or rocks. While we went and 
Well, we thought were islands suddenly rumbled, vibrating, meaning as ground own tremors from an earthquake. They're all part of a whale. A colossal creature shuddered as it wakes from the sh long slumber. I really like this artwork. It scares me, and it's just like, oh no, Ishii. But it's so. Mm. <laughs> I still like it. I thought we were gonna get more of the. Like the ones at the lobotomy corp. Okay, Pierce is normal. Blunt is also normal. Wait, that was real, but that was more stagger related. Uh, okay, you don't like pride or the da da da. Is that one lust? I think that one's lust. Wrath? No, that's lust. Wrath, lust, sloth, glut, gloom, gloom, pride. I don't remember. Still no problems. We're good. Hopefully I get a level up. Cause... Wasting stuff to be able to level up. Uh, I'm like... I'm at 140. I got 20 experience for that. Ugh, I'm not gonna hit the level up before I run out of experience. Or stamina. Shit. Well, if I'm lucky, it might be the chapter end. Or this section end, rather. My bar of rare has a level, but it's not up high. Which actually, I think it should be able to up high now that I realize, because I did also gather some threads. Gather slash exchange threads that I wasn't really using. 
Slash planning on using you and so. Or shards, rather. I wasn't using. Ugh. I have like a stockpile growing for Ishmael and Ryoshi and a little bit of Long Lu. Cause. And Yusong. Did I get my four? Growing. I should probably upgrade keep growing more. Uh, if you're gonna do that, then I have to do that! But... My focus has been Ryoshu and Ishmael. Probably because I dumped my season two boxes. Because I didn't fully realize that the egos that they were going to release were going to be uh, season pass egos. It's like, I must have them. That was fine, especially with Ryoshu, because I was already eager to get her in a... for cooking one. And I would not be shocked if she gets another... she gets an identity with the third section, the final section of this chapter as well. Thank you, sir. Right, I get it. I get it now. All these rocks were actually whales. And I get that mermaids pop out of those pores. But I think it's a loony thing that... Why are we even drawing their ire, huh? We could have just gone around them. Looking to let off some steam. Hangering for a game of whack-a-mole all of a sudden, is that it? Of course not. This is just the only method I know. You better be ready to explain what you're talking about. Heathcliff Furious wasn't the only sinner looking at Ishmael with expectant eyes. There were Otis and other singers who looked who all look, look to her for some answers. Ishmael? And I was too, of course. I also didn't think I'd actually be doing this. Well, so there's this legend-like tale. Legend? Each lake of the Great Eat Lake has its own culture, with many wandering and choosing to call those places their home. So naturally, there are as many tales as there are lakes. And there's that one tale of a certain lake that has passed down orally from sailor to sailor, just like the legends of old. The legend of the gloomy gray lake of wafting and rumbling. Sailors sang their legend of that lake, passing it down for years upon years. Doom and hue dive path to misty seas. The gloom and light whales draw their pearls and search a pallid hue. Tom shall... Tom shall be thy misty path. Heed the weeping whales. Whatever does that mean? It's simple. Get the poorest whales to wake them up. Draw out and hunt their mermaids. And the path to the pallid whale should clear ear of the mist. Do you really believe that? You expect us to just believe that hogwash? Blimey, don't think I'd ever get to say hey, these words before my deathbed, but... Are you stupid? 
Listen, what is waking up these, wi these whales up have anything to do with getting rid of that thick fog? It's gotta make even a little bit of sense, no? Heathcliff discusses the correlation between actions and consequences. This is truly a rare experience indeed, especially since his actions had some fucked up consequences for the rest of us. Ah, <sighs> shut it, smart arse. I'm serious. And you think the law that sends waves after us, if we don't cross the borders at exact, exact right moment, makes sense? Huh? You think the law that makes us go, go in circles before reaching our destination, the law that doesn't let us go back the way we came from, makes any sense? <sighs> I've been telling you this whole time. Common sense has no place in the Great Lake. That's just the way this place works, okay? Just you have to accept that. Fine. I'll give you that. But they're like the laws of the city. And outlandish as they are, they're still strict laws that can be calculated into those variable coordinates and or whatnot. Well, you're blathering here in some vague old song. Am I supposed to believe something so absurd? Yes, because I've seen it myself. Years ago, when a young, stupid, but motivated sailor boarded the ship, she had the most unfortunate opportunity of witnessing this very legend with her own eyes. Because that's how she saw the pallid whale. Eclif fell silent, scratching his head. The rest of the sinners also nodded and began whispering. I really don't like you. Took the words right out of my mouth. I don't like any of this. But I know that you're not the kind of last to lie or tell all tall tales just to get the upper hand in a petty squabble. Fine. Let's go all the way to the end. I'll keep whacking those mole-like things with this club. I can also accept your explanation, but from now on, I would appreciate it if you could share your knowledge with us before doing anything. I'll try. In a way, I'm relieved that we now have a definite path forward. Yeah. Well, let's go find our next whale. Yes, Executive Manager. All aboard, men. Truly, the ocean mist is splitting as though so a blade has hewn it in half. Once we eliminated the mermaids of that last whale singled out by Ishmael, the fog slowly began to fade. Behind it was a different lake beyond the gray sea. Finally. We're actually going to see it. Are we? Are we? <gasps> so story, so down to experience! Our stamina! Eee! Give me more <laughs> That background looks ominous. Because it's gray and blurry and black. Oh, the weather there is quite hostile. Mentersol Alt was right. The lake beyond the borders was nigh pitch black. The waves crested tall, rising and crashing violently under the thundering rainstorm. The wild winds had begun to sway the boat. Ah, Yisong's face was starting to grow pale. Poor boy. I'm starting to wonder if we can really do this. Did we ever let that stop us from trying? Oh, I guess that's true. Alright, heading into the zone. Are there any laws of that lake that we must be mindful of? I don't know the laws of that lake, nor its waves. I remember the way the fog spit open, I remember the obsidian sea and the endless tempest. But the rest of it... All I remember is that the captain was excitedly delivering a speech at witnessing the legend come to life and that we were all busy preparing for the whale hunt. So what awaits us ahead is a real adventure. We'll be sailing blindly into the night. 
Then we'll have to face everything head on. Yes. If the waves come to claim us, we will face them head on. Even the whale. No signs of that whale yet, though. Back then, it attacked us mere minutes after we entered the lake. Everyone was as tense as they could ever be, looking around nervously. Wait, that's... What's that? There's something there, something tall. A close approach is recommended. I have a source of light to improve our visibility. Marisol got up with a lantern and pointed the light towards where Sinclair indicated. There's several of them. What's that? Hell, who put them there? What are they even for? Maybe they're like lighthouses. Lighthouses? Yeah, I can kind of see that. Do you remember seeing anything like that, Ishmael? No. I don't even have a hazy recollection of it. I've never seen it before in my... Ishmael? Has the Najwa of Swing Sea gone to you as well? Your face has grown rather pale. What is that? I knew that can't be true. A seasick sailor only exists in jokes. Besides, Ishmael was doing just fine mere moments ago. Then she must have had a sudden realization. I see. So that's what it looked like. Even a small part of it is... a terrifying realization. What is it? You'll find out soon enough. Even if you don't want to. There's a rogue wake up in the head. All hands brace. Grab onto what you can. Did Sinclair just go overboard? Before we even had a chance to say anything, a leviathan of a wave rose to its crest and crashed into us from above. And it sunk us deep into the lake before throwing us back to the surface. We were lucky. There was a high chance that the falling vortex would have dragged the vessel deep underwater. Lucky? You saw what that was down- what was down there? That was... Everyone okay? Everyone was soaking wet, nearly hyperventilating, but most awestruck by what we've just witnessed. We have everyone but- Huh? We just saw down there. Or... They're, they weren't lighthouses. They were... Tales of colossal whales. Wow. Okay. I really want to give up now. I want to go back to the time when I didn't know what the whales really looked like. So this is the lake where the whales come to sleep. Yeah. If they're deep in the water with their necks bent like that, I could see their tails rising tall all over the surface. But there's no way they miss this commotion. The ship is- we're, we're killing over! The whales are waking up. We're finally here. I think that's what Ishmael whispered, but the storm and wave is buried her voice deep into the lake. If the Indigo Elder made it here as we planned... <coughs> Dawn? Over yonder! Is that the whale? We didn't have to walk under even for a second about what Don Quixote was screaming at. An entire herd of entities, e ever each dwarfing... ...ping every single whale we weathered throughout this journey an entire herd of entities each dwarfing every single whale we've weathered throughout this journey emerged from the waters all at once in unison they began migration in a single direct angular direction to witness something and like that was enough to make even marisol gap with playing bewilderment looks like things are going according to plan then we'll have, have to do our part. Huh? There, there.
There was a whale that stood it out even among the herd of effable, immense whales. Pallid as pale death, its hide I thick with scar tissue. That one particular scarred. That one's particularly scarred. I found it. Yes, he was right. The wounds, scars that we, the Pequod made, they're still all still there. I assume that you have finally located the whale. Virgilis! Nice that you could come over walkie talkie. I believe so, yes. As always, the chance of success must be minuscule. Indeed, it is. Oarsman! Ishmael thundered. Ishmael? No louder than the thunder itself, as though her personality itself had suddenly shifted. Her voice seemed to overwhelm the very storm itself. Answer, you dog, oarsman! Set root to that pallid thing. Full speed ahead, row! Full speed ahead, row! Even Otis was swept up in the sudden turn of events, repeating after Ishmael's bell and commands. Is that what Ishmael was like when she sailed of the lakes, or... <laughs> Is this the captain? I see light. It's the Indigo Elder. The old man and his skiff were sliding across the waters toward the whale. Listen well. The rest of the awakening whales have gone out after the bait I've laid for them. And the plan worked. Now, ah! It wasn't clear whether it was the thunder or the old man's bellow that awakened the pallid whales. Its eyelid began to lift. I didn't think that was going to be its eye. I thought that was just supposed to be a scar. <laughs> It's been so long since I've witnessed anything like this up close. It was an eye of astronomical proportion, so immense that it no longer resembled an eye, but a reflection mirror of the world. Oh, how I wish to see you, I die. The old man, harpoon in hand, draws closer to the whale with a grin. Sony expression, Ishmael also aims her harpoon at the great whale, her face nearly tearing with un in a bold joy. Some sinners tremble with fear while others prepare themselves. All of it, the world contained in a single reflective eye that stretched even beyond our peripheral vision. Now, here's your bait fish. Bite on it. I know you have no other choice. Biting, devouring, that's all you've ever known. Oarsmen, split the sea with your oars. I respect you, Pallid Whale. I respect that you have lived years and years in numbers that I can't even begin to imagine. I respect that you hail from a place beyond my ken. But I will take this chance to stand before you to challenge you. And with this challenge, to the edge of understanding, I will row. The giant harpoon sailed the plot across the black sky like a bolt of eleven of it and strikes the pallid whale. Now, what's our chance? Roll on, roll on. Ishmael's tail rose tall and alone, looking straight out beyond the speeding ink boat swaying bow, harpoon in her hand. I've been thinking ever since then about what feelings you might dig up from my heart if I saw you again. But this feeling is much more straightforward than I expected. Nice meeting you again, you fucking whale. Compared to the old man's harpoon, the harpoon Ishmael hurled was like a needle. But once struck as though its body was racked with by an immense unbearable pain, the pallet would small open and the air itself began to vibrate. It's small as open. Go. I will now fist the beast. Every sinner heard the old man's voice. Every sinner begins rowing with all their might. 
In desperation as though death itself was in our pursuit, as though it was our fate, our destiny to row. We were sunk into an endless abyss, and a rapid vorkus pulled us into the maws of the beast. Treborous as well as under the moonless sky, there was a deep noise. And like a droplet in sea, we melted into the fathomless dark. Acknowledge and knowledge, how goes the plan? Acknowledge, hey! Looks like the radio's broken for good. Hmm, worrying. We got swallowed. We're eaten. We got eight. <laughs> Unlocked next time. Oh, I'm so glad I had just enough to get through this. Oh my god, I can't believe I was actually so close. I think it was mid of doing the 5:30 fight when I checked my friend's messages and they said you only have to get him to half health. And one of those earlier er, attempts, it was so close. I just lost the clashes and was fucked oh my god